Good morning. In this video, using the non-farm payroll data release at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, March the 6, 2015, a lesson upon the value of the United States dollar will be demonstrated. Before the non-farm payroll data is released in about six minutes, I'd like to talk a little bit about the value of money and values in general. A good place to start would probably be to define what having values means. Having values. A personal value is an individual's absolute or relative and ethical value, the assumption of which can be the basis for ethical action. A value system is a set of consistent values and measures. A principal value is a foundation upon which other values and measures of integrity are based. Notice the words used in defining values. Ethical, consistent, measured, integrity. It is easy to determine that having values is a good thing. Having ethical, consistent values makes you a good character with integrity. Besides moral values, what else do the vast majority of people endeavor, endeavor for throughout their adult lives that has value? Money. What value does the U.S. dollar have? It started out being defined by the Mint Act of 1972 as pure silver, 371 and 4 sixteenths grains, or standard silver, 416 grains with up to 10% of a dollar coin being allowed to have copper as an alloy. That is the consistent definition in 1792 of a U.S. dollar. There is a lot of monetary history in the 1800s. However, let's skip from 1792 to the Bretton Woods Agreement in 1944 that created the International Monetary Fund, IMF. What this did was try and stabilize the exchange rates between the fiat currencies of the world. In part, this facilitated the reconstruction of all the damage done during World War II. However, what the Bretton Woods Agreement also did was pull the value of the U.S. dollar into an official system of a basket of international currencies. True, in the beginning, gold was used as a balancing reserve for the international currencies. However, in 1971, President Richard Nixon took our country off that standard. After Nixon did that, what value does the U.S. dollar have? What you see here is an interface from a popular foreign exchange trading system. And these are the exchange rates between the major currencies of the world. It is my understanding that this program gets multiple prices from many central banks throughout the world and creates the prices you see here as an average which it offers to its customers. So there it is. There is the value of the US dollar flitting up and down in comparison to other foreign currencies. Not only is the value of the U.S. dollar not set to just one other foreign currency, it flits an exchange rate to multiple foreign cur currencies throughout the world. That's the Euro U.S. dollar, that's the British pound U.S. dollar, that's the Australian U.S. dollar, and other foreign currencies like the Euro and the Yen you can trade upon and have foreign exchange rates set upon them. And this is all supposedly overseen by the IMF, International Monetary Fund, which has standards on these exchange rates. Global trade is something that makes all our lives richer. However, is pitting our country's money against one another by flitting exchange rates really to be associated with having values? Remember, values is defined as ethical, consistent, measured, and in with integrity. What we are seeing here is hyper-elasticity. It is fast, it changes many times a second, and it is super elastic. The IMF facilitates global trade through its cowboying of foreign exchange rates. However, besides the fact that there are better and more stable ways to facilitate global trade, just how stable is this foreign exchange rate system? The non-farm payroll data that's going to be released here in a minute is 
going to give us a real-time example of what is called a shock and you're going to see this this is the exchange rates right now throughout the world all the countries that are importing and exporting and changing dollars into or the money that they engage business in into the currency of their country all the ships going across the oceans the oil the products from China all the food from South America and all the exports from the United States is all being run by these exchange rates here by the central banks now over here the, I have a couple charts set up we have the euro and dollar and you can see it's kind of clicking right along they measure it uh, well below the cents that's the cents so it's in the thousands of a cent and here is the dollar and the Swiss franc and these usually go in opposite directions and it's 728 now at 730 the non-farm payroll data will be released and you'll notice that um, the euro dollar is about 1.09 let's say a dollar and a dollar and ten cents because we'll round up that seven we'll just use that as a benchmark in our example a dollar and ten cents um, you'll notice that the chart right here goes from a dollar ten or a dollar one point zero nine seven to one point zero nine three so there's really within a cent there's about four hay pennies and we're starting to see a little movement here in anticipation it is 729 and 30 seconds and a little movement on the charts and at 730 the data should be released in 20 seconds now the IMF was set up in 1944 and there's some controversy about who was involved in doing that since Harry Dexter White the US representative was found out to be a communist spy later on and with these exchange rates you can um, siphon wealth off by uh, making one currency stronger than the other over a period of time or devaluing the other whoa look at there on the uh, the Swiss franc BAM that's the exchange rate right there and that went from let's see 1974 to 1967 at this point that's really not that much of a change because that's just a difference of about one all right so we have 730 42 seconds there's the reaction of the euro dollar and what's happening on these each one of these candles on these candle start candle charts that each one of these uh, candlesticks is one minute in time and during that time you have the top of the candle which is the buy and then the ask and then the top of these lines is the maximum price during that minute that would change. Now look at that. Bam. And it's still going down. That's what's called a shock. And it's still going down. If you notice the chart over here, 1.98, 1.90. And now we're down here at 1.8. And from 1.09 to 1.08 is a penny if you have a million dollars in British in euros right now to the US dollar people are selling the euro and buying the dollar so if I'm not mistaken I mean that means that the data released on initial inspection was good for or positive for the US dollar um, however I have seen this thing go wildly down and then wildly back up like a whipsaw so that's why the currency exchangers tell you I mean here's an example right here all the way down and then all the way back up 
from where it started. And you can tell just how uh, wild the variation is because these candlesticks were fairly large when it started, but because the minimum and maximum range expanded so much to account for these larger candlesticks, all the rest of these candles in comparison shrunk, as you see here. So while this is playing out, oh, didn't mean to do that. Come back down here. All right. So while this is playing out, um, go ahead and finish up a little bit here. The non-farm payrolls data is released once a month. And there are other dates throughout the month where U.S. economic data is released some of which affect these exchange rates as well, not to mention that there are economic events in all these other countries when their data is released. Other events that affect these exchange rates are natural, natural disasters, accidents, and terrorist attacks. I was trading, stupidly without a stop loss, buying the US dollar, Swiss franc, when the Islamists attacked the London subway on July the 7th, 2005. In a matter of one half hour, I lost $400. I have a very small trading account, so that is small potatoes in the larger scheme of things. And no serious investor would, <coughs> should not trade without a stop loss. These are the type of shocks that shake the value of the world's currencies, like nobody's business. There is also another sick scenario to what I just described about that terrorist attack. What if I had been selling the U.S. dollar and Swiss franc? I would have made money off of the Islamists killing innocent people in London. How many people in the world who do trade currencies made money that day off of the Islamist terrorism? Is that what we want the value of our U.S. dollar to be able to do? Is that what our personal values condone? To make money off of exchange rates when it can be influenced by the terroristic murdering of innocent people? I'm of the opinion that the honor of the United States and the value of its money should have a lot more integrity than that. I don't know what I would have done had I been on the winning side of that trade. I would have felt guilty at the very least. What you see on the trading station is the prices offered by the broker over here. It is a business client relationship, but what you see on the charts over here is what the value of the US dollar is in comparison with just these two currencies the US dollar and the euro and the US dollar and the Swiss franc um, at this moment it is bucking all across the globe not just I just have the chart set up for these two all these other ones you can see are just uh, changing like a Christmas tree or like a strobe light I guess um, blinking Christmas lights the IMF is supposed to be a sort of stop loss to make sure all these exchange rates don't get too far out of whack. When certain triggers are set off, the IMF is supposed to mandate a country take steps to bring itself back into line. What we are witnessing here is all under control, folks. This, is, uh, this wild ride is perfectly accounted for. As you can see over here, you know that's, that's a full penny exchange rate right there drop for the US dollar and it's still going south from 198 1.09 to 1.08 so if you had um, a million euros and you just lost a penny in exchange to what you could buy in the United States that's something that uh, international trade has to account for and I was just affected by the release of some economic data here in the United States. Well, there it is, citizens. That is what it is called a shock to the monetary system. It is a short-term shock, and for the most part, the system will keep rolling along. However, what does this say about the value of the U.S. dollar? What a wild ride, right? I've seen it worse than this, but that serves the purpose right there. For a company that has millions of U.S. dollars in holdings and other foreign currencies, what you just witnessed was their portfolio just take a wild rodeo bull ride. In James Madison's preface to the notes of the debates in the Federal Convention of 1787, he said, 
in the internal administration of the states a violation of contracts had become familiar in the form of depreciated paper made a legal tender. Over a long period of time, with many, many economic events, natural disasters, accidents, and terrorist events, how easy is it for a violation of contracts to occur in the form of currencies of wildly fickle exchange rates? Is this what having values really should mean? What was ethical, consistent, measured, or having integrity about what we just witnessed? Thomas Paine said in Common Sense, a long habit of not thinking a thing wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right and raises at first a formidable outcry in defense of custom. What we just witnessed was just that, a wrong thing having the superficial appearance of being right and everyone in favor of the current value of the U.S. dollar and the system set up by the IMF will raise at first a formidable outcry in defense of custom. Unfortunately, having values does not suffer that which is wrong, superficial, nor care what outcry is made about customs. Having values means accurately measured, consistent, ethical scales. Was what we just witnessed here, was that a good thing? Is that what you labor for, for your U.S. dollar, your store of value? It's something to think about and it's something that we will we'll be addressing in the future.